The last major U function thing to cover is RPCs, that is remote procedure calls. These are functions that execute over the network. So to better understand that, it's, let's look at a picture first. So we have you know the world and client one and client two is playing. So client one is in control of this guy circled and client two is in control of this other guy that's circled. Both of those people are connected to a server. At high level, there are three types of RPCs. There's a server RPC, there's a client RPC, and then there's a multicast RPC. The server RPC will be called on a client. So I will invoke it on my client. It'll travel across the net and then the function will actually execute on the server. So the name of the RPC refers to where it actually executes, not who calls it. A client RPC is called on the server and it travels across the net and it executes on the client that it's associated with. So in this case, there's client one and client two. If I call a client RPC for client one, it only goes to client one. That is defined by the net owner. So there's a concept of an owner and that defines these like network connections. And so a server could call a client RPC for client two and it would go across the net only to client two and only execute there. The last RPC is net multicast. Net multicast is executed on the server and it goes across the net and it'll execute on client one. It'll go across the net and execute on client two. And if there's another client, it'll execute on all of them. And so as a recap, a server RPC is called from a client, goes across the net and executes on the server. A client RPC is called on the server, goes across the net and executes on the client. A multicast is called on the server and it executes on everyone's machines, including the server's machine. So how do we write this? You just type U function and we're gonna make a server RPC. So we'll say server. We want this to be reliable, so we don't want it to ever be dropped. So we'll say reliable. You can specify unreliable for more cosmetic stuff, but we want this to always happen. So we'll, we'll say reliable, which is a bit more expensive. And we'll make it also blueprint callable so that we can evoke this from blueprint. Then all we have to do is say void server. And just to drill the point in, this will be called on client executes on server. And so we've defined this server RPC. Now, if we create a body for this function, have you visual assist, notice that the server RPC has to have this underscore implementation. So there is some boilerplate that is generated for you so that when you call this function, it knows to route it to this implementation. We'll see that in a moment. Let's drop a breakpoint in that function. Now let's also create a client RPC. So we'll say you function client also make it reliable and let's say a blueprint callable. So void, we'll prefix that with client. We'll say called on server executes on owning client. And so we'll create a body for that. And again, we'll have this underscore implementation at the end of the body. And lastly, what we will do is we will create a multicast. So we'll say net multicast. We'll make that reliable and we'll make a blueprint callable just so we could call it from anywhere in blueprint. So that's called on the server and it executes everywhere. We'll make a body for that and you'll see it also has this implementation. And so what we'll do to test this is we'll have a client do some input to execute a server RPC. So on the server RPC, what we'll do is we'll call the client so we're on the server and we're gonna call client. So this will send a message to the client that owns the pawn effectively. So the net owner will send it to that client only. Then after that, we'll just do a net multicast and that'll send it everywhere. And that should be enough to get us started. So let's compile that. So now we can open up our pawn and we'll just use a debug keyboard event. So this will be on the client when we press it. And what we'll do is we'll say server Called on client executes on server. So we'll call this server RPC here. It'll execute on the server. So let's just drop a breakpoint right here, compile this, save it. And now to test this, we really should test it with two clients. So what we'll do is we'll go down to number of players, two. And we also need to make sure our net mode is set to play as client. So this is going to spin up a dedicated server and two clients for us, since we have two specified there. So if we play. Okay, so I'm going to press T on the client. And so now you can see we hit the breakpoint and we are currently on the client as it says here at the top, client. 
And so we're going to call the server RPC, which is going to go, we're currently here. We're going to call the server RPC. It's going to go across the net and execute on the server. So I'm going to continue. So now we are on the server. So if we look at our play and editor context string, it says dedicated server. And so we know we are currently executing on the server. So if we go back to the picture, that's here. We are currently executing here. The first thing we're going to do is call this client RPC, which is going to basically send the RPC down the wire to whoever owns this pawn and call the function there. But notice in that situation, we did not send it to client two. Next, what we're going to do is call the net multicast. And if you recall, the multicast executes on all of the clients. So the first thing it's going to do is execute on the server, and then it's also going to execute on client one and client two. So it's going to execute in all three places. And so now you can see we've got hit by this net multicast. And if we look, we're on a dedicated server. So this is as expected for the multicast. We're going to execute it here, here, and here. We've executed it on the server. So if I continue, we then hit our client called on, uh, which is on the owning client. So if we look down at our play and editor context string, it says client one. So that was our client RPC that went down here and now it's executing on this guy's machine. And so now we had the multicast. I've just continued and we hit the multicast. We're on client one. So that multicast, we already hit the server as soon as we caught it. And now we're on client one. So we've done the multicast here. We still need to do it on client two. So if I continue, now we've hit the multicast again. And if we look down at the play and editor context string, it says client two. So if I continue, that was all of our RPCs. So you might wonder, well, what if we didn't call the multicast on the server? What if we called the multicast on the client? What would happen there? And so what we'll do is we'll live code this. So I've disabled it on the server and I've made it part of the clients. So this will only execute on the client. Will the multicast make it to the server and the client? The answer is no, but we'll debug it to prove it to you. So if I play, so I press T, so we are on the client and I'm about to call the server RPC. So now we are on the server, execute server. We'll call the client RPC, which will send it back to the client. So now we're back on the client, client one, and we'll try executing this multicast from the client. And so you'll see that it only will execute on the client itself, but it won't execute on anyone else's machine. So if I continue, we hit the net multicast, still in client one, but if I continue, we will not see it execute on the server or the client. So that's the case. It did not execute on the server or the other client. And so that's why you should call your net multicast on the server and not on the individual client. There's some cases where you might want to execute it only on your client just for some redundant thing, but most of the time you want to execute a net multicast from the server. Just so you are aware, there is also unreliable RPCs. So this may or may not actually make it to all the clients. Um, so that lets you have kind of cosmetic events where if the network is saturated or bogged down, it can just drop these RPCs and not worry about losing them. The other thing to note is there's a with validation check. So we can do an RPC. And we'll say with validation. And we'll make this blueprint callable. We'll say boy server with validation failed. And so, so what validation lets you do is have some sort of validation for maybe detecting cheating. And if cheating happens, reject the person from the server. So when you have with validation, you get the standard RPC underscore implementation that we covered already. But also you get this function that returns a bool that is an underscore validate. And so what we'll do is return false here instead of true. So we are failing the validation. So if I compile this, and if you fail validation, you get kicked from the server. Oh, this unreliable needs to be named something different. So we'll say unreliable. And so now if we compile that, okay, it compiled successfully. So what we can do is go in our pawn and we'll do the debug button of Y. What we'll do is we'll say server RPC validate failed. And so this is intentionally going to fail validation so we can see what happens. So put a breakpoint there, compile that. So let's spin up two clients. So we have two pawns here and I'm gonna have this guy 
send an RPC that gets its validation failed. So pressing Y. So we call the function server with validation failed. We've hit our breakpoint for false and watch what happens. So I've continued and we hop back over. Our client got kicked out of that game and put in some random level. And so that is what happens with validation failed. If you fail the validation, you boot the player from the game immediately. We will continue looking more U functions and further videos.